Most websites are going to have lots of different images. And one of the things you're going to want to do is optimize those images to make sure they're fast loading. Now, sure, you could upload them and let the server handle this, but it doesn't give you much control. So we're going to take a look at how to do this offline to optimize your images before you upload them. We're going to be using an absolutely free piece of software, and the software we're going to use is called Affinity. This has recently been made free, and it gives us so many options to be able to create and customize our images. But we're going to take a look at one particular feature, and that's the ability to batch optimize our images. Let me show you, because there's some really cool features here that allow you to do quite a few things really quickly. So. I've installed a copy of Affinity. I'll put a link to this down in the description down below. So install this and you can use it for so many different things. We're going to come over into the file option. From there, we're going to choose a new image process. I'm going to come down to batch job. So inside this dialog box is broken into two different sections. The left hand side are the source images we're going to resize or batch process. And the right hand side is how we're going to handle that batch processing. So first of all, let's add in some images. So I'm going to choose the add option. I've got a folder on my computer that's got a bunch of images in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these images and choose open. And now that shows us on the left hand side all the images. And we can keep on adding. You know, we can remove if we want to. You can do whatever you need to do to get as many images in as you want. And that's the beauty of this. You can load in tons of images. So now we've got our source set up. Let's focus on the right hand side. Let's take a look at the first thing. Save into the original location or save into a different location. Well, we're going to say save into. Click the three dots. And I've already created a folder inside my images folder called resize. I'll select it and choose OK. And now underneath there, we've got all the different image formats that are supported for this batch processing. So you can see by default, it uses the affinity file. We don't want that, so we're going to uncheck it. What we do want, though, is we're going to say we want to save them as JPEGs and we want to save them as WebP. So we can now export these in two different formats at the same time. And you can choose multiple formats. You may want to use PNG as well. Absolutely can do it. JPEG XL. Again, you can do. We'll uncheck those. We're not going to worry about those for now. Then you've got your width and your height. So this will resize the images based upon the value or values you place inside you. So let's say we want to set these to be something like 1024 on the width. And we'll do the same thing then for the other one. And again, you can have different values here if you want to. Then you've got the little checkbox that says whether you want to preserve the aspect ratio. And then if you want to fine tune any of these particular file formats, you can click the three dots to the right hand side. So for example, under our JPEG, let's click on there. And you can see this shows us all different information, including the quality that we want to output them at. So we'll say we'll drop this down to something like 75 or 70. That should be good enough. We don't worry about the metadata in this example, and we'll leave everything else as it is. But you can choose whatever you want inside you. You can choose different resampling rates and so on. We'll do the same then for our web piece. We'll click the three dots. And again, we'll choose the option here. We'll set this to be something like 70. If you want to set this to be lossless, so it keeps the quality, you can do it again. You've got the same kind of options then for the resampling. And from here, you can choose various different resampling options. Different ones may give you different results, but we're working with the web. So all of these is going to give a pretty decent result. So I would leave it at the bilinear for this example. Then underneath, we've got two more options. We've got available macros and applied macros. The available macros allow us to choose one or more different macros we can apply to the images when they're being processed. And a macro is basically one or more instructions that are carried out in a sequence. And you can record your own macros. If you'd like me to create a video on that, let me have a comment down below and let me know. And I'll absolutely create a video showing you. But we've got a couple of options here. So you may say, I want to convert the images to sRGB. We'll click Apply. That now moves over to the Applied Macros. And we want to convert them to black and white. Click Apply. And that will, again, move over to the Applied Macros. So now we've got all these things in place. We've got all the images, the formats we want to convert them to, where we want to save them, the settings for each of those formats, and potentially a couple of Applied Macros. All we need to do now is click OK. I'm going to remove these macros, though, because I don't want these. So I'm going to click Remove. And the same again, and we'll click OK. And that will then go and batch process all these images. We click OK. Done. It was that quick. So everything has now been batch processed. 
So now what we've got is we've got two copies of every file. We've got the WebP and the JPEG versions. So you can see we've got all of those inside here. And if we click on any of these, we can see there's the image. We can see all the details about it. It's been resized to 1024. Same thing if you go for this one, resized to 1024 by whatever the height is in this example, keeping that aspect ratio in place. So now we've got optimized images converted to the formats that we wanted, ready to upload to our website, making them much smaller than their starting point. All done in site affinity for zero cost whatsoever and this is probably using 0.1% of what you can do with the affinity suite of tools so if you'd like more tutorials with a kind of web designer slant for using affinity let me have a comment down below but there we go that's all we needed to do absolutely free easy to do and now everything is batch processed super quickly hopefully you found this useful all applicable links are in the description down below my name is paul c this is wp tuts and until next time take care